Go away, you swine! Leave, or I'll make you bleed! These all came from the swamps. Could be toting contraband. Bones! Help me! Do not fight the calling! <laughs> Blood! I beg of you, home. For dying! Relies your blood! Oh, 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 no. No, it, it can't be. It can't end like this. Uh, again, this nightmare haunts me. It won't let me forget. How did this all begin? Good morning, Holmes. Looks like a typical London day. Fog in the morning, fog in the afternoon. Ha! And here's a surprise. Fog in the evening. Good morning, Watson. Can you imagine? I have been at it since 5am, and I scarcely think my list of patients for the day has even been touched. What is more insufferable, I haven't even had a moment with the morning paper. They say the minister will assuredly... Holmes, whatever is the matter, you haven't heard a word I have said. It is the tedium, my dear Watson. Life is ordinary, the papers are lifeless, any hint of audacity, and dare I say romance has vanished from the criminal world. Holmes, it is only temporary. You know perfectly well that sooner or later an exceptional incident will occur in London or thereabout which cannot rest till the talents of Sherlock Holmes are called into play. Then it will be up to your agile wit to set things right, which should satisfy your constant need for mental gymnastics. I hope the heavens hear your words, Watson. I hope they do indeed. Well, I must take my leave, Holmes. I have an appointment with a rather odious man, Captain Stenick. He is apparently in a state, with near tachycardia due to some problem involving his manservant. Why don't you get out for a brisk walk, Holmes? Perhaps buy a newspaper or visit that fellow, Barnes, over on Glentworth Street. You might remember him, the bookseller. He has some new volumes of the particular sort that should occupy your mind for a time. The Strand! The Strand! Boy, The Strand! 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 Boy, The Strand!
So, my young friend, what is the news? Nothing of interest for the great detective, sir. Those old stuffed shirts ate up half of London at their big scientific to do, and some Candesnavia princess is driving the locals wild with curiosity. A Scandinavian royal is in London? If you and the lads can look sharp and find out more about her visit, there will be some coin for your pockets. Right on, Mr. Holmes. If there's aught to be found, the Irregulars will have it. I'll send the words out to the lads. It is necessary to keep my informants in fighting form. Pardon me, I'm looking for the Barnes Bookshop. Would you happen to know it? I know the place, know it well, Mr. Holmes. The bookshop is on Glentworth Street. Take your first right and then the next left and you'll find it straight away. My respects, Miss Fleming. Good day, Mr. Holmes. Good morning, Mr. Holmes. How are you? I have some new novels that should interest you. A nice illustrated volume on fish and a collection of legends on piracy. They must be here somewhere. Appears to be a trace of shoe leather. Did somebody fall here? Those flowers need watering. By the way, Barnes, before some misfortune befalls you, I am quite certain Miss Fleming, the flower saleswoman, would prefer chocolates to a fractured bone. But how could you know that? Indeed, even she, I mean, I told no one about this. Other than Dr. Watson, that is. Oh, I see now how it goes. Not at all. Watson would never reveal a confidential matter of professional trust. He did, however, mention your fine shop and your novelties. Knowing his views on classical literature, I doubt there would be any inducements to enter your shop unless it was professional business. What would trouble a man of your age and position sufficient to require the services of a doctor? I noticed trace of shoe leather on the stepladder and deduced that you no doubt lost your balance, fell, and likely suffered a nasty sprain. As for the flowers, you deliberately let them die and left this sad display open to the public, hoping, no doubt, that their supplier would notice and take great efforts to come and replace them. Also, I know Miss Fleming to be a statuesque woman, so typical of the Scandinavians. I noted that you would likely wear shoes with a high heel, so that you and Miss Fleming, should she arrive, see more eye to eye. Unfortunately, climbing about on ladders and the like in such shoes is a risky business, isn't it? Indeed, it is, Mr. Holmes. Believe me, Barnes, try chocolates next time. And besides, it requires a bit more than well-heeled shoes to find a proper soulmate. Don't you agree? Ah, the pirate's book. A book about sea fauna. I will take them. Thank you, and goodbye, Mr. Holmes. Holmes! Here! It's good that I've found you, Holmes. As I told you this morning, I've visited Captain Stenick. Although his symptoms are not serious, the circumstances which caused his palpitations are quite peculiar. Perhaps you can make something of it. Here is Captain Stenick and Sergeant Rufels.
Captain, I understand from Watson you are quite upset. Any man will be the same, and with less provocation. My servant has left in the middle of the night. Damned ungrateful after all I have done for him. To top it off, he knows not one word of English. Finally, if he causes any damage, I will bear the brunt of people's anger and suffer the consequences, as I am the person who brought him to England. How long was he in your employment, and is he accustomed to vanishing in this manner? We returned from Australia more than five months ago now, but to his credit he never left this house before now. He is afraid of the city, as are many inhabitants from open spaces. Could he have stolen something? Upon my word, no. How much money does he have on his person? Frankly speaking, he didn't have any money. I kept his wages for him, and they are in my safe. In any event, what the deuce would he have a need for money? Who knew that he worked at your home, and had he any contacts here in London? Anyone who deals with me professionally knows Baopa is my personal servant. As for his contacts, they are limited to the delivery men who bring food or other items to my home. What reason could he have to see anyone other than myself? Now then, Sergeant, what is it about, and what elements of the crime do you have documented? Referring to the official report, the following particulars were taken down. A young Maori responding to the name Bayalpa was reported missing by his employer, Mr Stenick. No one in the surrounding area saw or heard anything relevant to this incident. In truth, we rarely concern ourselves with cases such as this, but the lad speaks not a single word of English, and according to his employer, has considerable strength. Considering the wild customs of his native land, who knows what damage he could cause? You must know, Mr Holmes, there have been a few similar cases reported recently. The facts are much the same. Immigrants from the poor districts have been reported missing by their families. We expect that some low-class brothel has opened its doors to the local exotics, and Mr Holmes, you can imagine how word would spread. Mark my words, with his unique looks and speech, we'll find this boy in no time. I imagine he'll have nothing worse to show than empty pockets and a delighted air. That is a possibility, to be sure. However, I would be most grateful if you could ask your superiors to send me the reports about those similar cases. I rely on you, Ruffles. Watson, continue your search here. I must follow another lead. The lock was not cracked. Flaxen, yellow in colour. What a peculiar drawing. Hmm, this appears to contain some measure of opium. I shall analyse it at Baker Street. Steps. Let's see. The size is undoubtedly seven. The shoes are also hard soled. Footsteps. Let's see. The size is undoubtedly seven. The shoes are also hard soled. The right shoe is missing a nail.
Hmm, how strange. This appears to be a fish scale. I shall have to examine this more thoroughly under the microscope. Yes, there is something here. should prove useful. Fibers, why are they here? Hmm, it will be necessary for me to examine this more closely at Baker Street. We must return to Baker Street. What do you make of this, Mr. Holmes? Mr. Stenick, I wish my news were your servant simply left your employment voluntarily for the service of a more honest man. Unfortunately, I don't have that pleasure. In truth, the news is grim indeed. Your servant was seen in the company of two men yesterday. One of the two is a man of moderate size, very robust, and a mature age. His profession, which will be the key element in our investigation of this affair, will be determined by me within few hours. The other is a young Hindi, who is tall and only recently arrived in England. There is a darker side to these events. Your man was not with them by choice. Rather, the evidence shows he was kidnapped. At this moment, the reasons behind this villainous act are unknown, but rest assured, the truth will not elude me for long. Gentlemen, I wish you a good day. Come, Watson, we must hurry. There's a great deal to do and little enough time to spare. Holmes, I must protest. You did not spare my client, Captain Stenick. This seems unusually harsh. That may be, Watson, but now what matters more is to know the reasons behind the kidnapping of this young Aboriginal yesterday evening in central London, and more importantly, what has become of him. I must concentrate on a small experiment. I will run to test my theories. Please go to the poor Lovelorn Barnes and ask him if he has something on the Maori nation and its traditions. Also, if you should happen to see the newsboy outside, find out what he knows, and if it has value, give him a coin. And for God's sake, don't be a miser, Watson. A miser? You cost me one of my patients, and you question my level of generosity with your informers? Oh, really, Holmes, sometimes you go too far. According to this monograph, the fish scale appears to be from a perch, a saltwater fish with high commercial and culinary value. Hmm, very interesting. These rope fibers are clearly hemp. Now, about the origin of these stains.
The meatball ignited but failed to burn completely. There are, without a doubt, mustard seeds present, probably in exotic form. What could be the other components, I wonder? Let's see if I can obtain a reaction with the help of my chemicals and apparatus. Perhaps if I apply heat? Incredible! I note a strong presence of opium blended with a concentrate of morphine. The remaining elements are a mystery to me. Let's see if I can obtain a reaction with the help of my chemicals and apparatus. This is evidently coal soot mixed with water, and given the absence of any salt particulates, it must be fresh water. I should look from the window and see where Watson is. There's a good lad. How does it go? Hello, sir. My associate, Sherlock Holmes, said you might have information for him about... about... Uh, now, what was it? The Princess Gav. He was looking for the scuttlebutt on this here princess what we visiting. Exciting goings on. Her bodyguard went missing the first morning after she got here. Nice job to look after a princess's body, isn't it, sir? They say he went out on a town having a go with the ladies, if you get my meaning. Like as not, he was trapped by some gang of toughs. Otherwise, who'd get the best of him? A proper giant he was, by all accounts. Do I get me coins then, sir? Oh, thank you, sir. Obliged, I'm sure. Good day, my dear Barnes. What about your... Tell me, Dr. Watson. Physicians are obliged to keep their patients' confidences, aren't they? Of course. Whatever do you mean? A moment ago, Mr. Holmes came to my shop and seemed very well informed about the details of my recent accident. You and I both know that there is only one person who knew about my condition, correct? Sir, I can assure you... No, please, say nothing. It is so easy to ridicule my despair. But I love her. Can't you understand? I love her. Uh, mm, yes, indeed. Uh, well, uh, in fact, I came here merely to see if you have a book on the Maoris. Over there, on the bottom shelf. I will take it. <clears throat> Farewell, Barnes.
Holmes, what on earth did you say to Barnes to put him in such a state? Not now, Watson, although I'm sure this bit of news is most significant. It must wait. We are piecing together a singular affair. This abduction story is much more complex than it appears. As I noted before, our next move is to locate the place of employment for one of the villains who abducted the young Maori. What part of London would such a man call home? Yes, Watson, there is little room for doubt. Our man is a bargeman who works at the Thames River wharfs. He is more precisely employed to transport and handle fish brought in by various ships. Our next step is obvious. We must find a cab and make haste to the Thames near the warehouses. Why did we come here, Holmes? Brr, it's rather sinister here, and so cold. Precisely, Watson. Ah, good. Here's a pub. We can warm ourselves inside. Excellent, Holmes. Good day to you, sir. Could you serve up two of your best pints and some information, if you please? My pleasure, sir. What can I do for you? My friend and I are looking for a man who works one of the fishing boats at the docks. The name of the ship escapes me, but I do know for certain fact it has a coal-fed boiler. In truth, there are dozens of such boats that lay anchor here every day. What can you tell me about the look of him? Only that he is a robust man, about this size, wearing iron soles. Little help there. You've just described half of my customers. I have nothing for you. Here now, look for the man called Harper. He lives in a house not far from here, after the bridge near the warehouses. You can't go wrong finding his place. It has a large anchor painted on it. By the way, I am in your debt. Please tell me, for curiosity's sake, what troubles your friend? He's been waiting ever so long for a new wooden hand. It was to be here yesterday, but still no sign of it. He is quite low and has taken to the drink. Oh, the devil! Last night a nasty flea woke me, and me with only the hook on me scratching hand. <laughs> and to add to me worries, imagine last summer I had worms. Worms? Yes, worms is what it was. A sudden attack in the middle of the night, again with only the one hand, and that blasted hook on the other. Hit me misery. I used the wrong hand. <laughs> Lord, I was unable to so much as sit for three weeks. <laughs> well, gentlemen, again, thank you. Have a nice day.
This old rope seems intact. No trace of soot present. Closed tight. Closed tight. No one is here. Excuse me for disturbing you, but I'm looking for a man named Mr. Harper. Do you know him? He lives just opposite you. He gone. Boat. Boat. Watson, I know this accent. These people are Nepalese, and as luck would have it, I am familiar with this dialect. Nepalese? Holmes, are you sure? Aho Nitra. Chigong se Nitra. Ah, Nito. Tro. Bo Petro. Toro Mitro. Toka. This woman says her family has suffered a grave misfortune. This altar is for her son, a lad of 16, who disappeared just one week ago. Could he have run away to sea, or some other youthful adventure? Il koga bratsein, but presinder kum. Bo petro toro mitro ka waekta to rikoto ha nito tro petro. She said a man was seen in the area making inquiries about her son and their family. The man worked at the docks and had a silver eye. Yes, exactly. He was a vile man with one silver eye. Malin he gas. Sundra brokhet hardu. Oda liga ha. Toro mitro. Ka. Petro. To ka. Ha. Nito. Waekto rikota. She also says her son's belongings are on this altar. She says we may examine them and take anything that might help find her son. But what does this have to do with Captain Stenick's servant? This is not Nepali. It looks like silver, but judging by the weight, it's a fake. Watson, it appears this young man is ill. Be a good man and see how serious it is. Here now, my young man. Let's have a look at you. Oh, oh, Holmes. This man isn't ill. He's drunk. He fairly reeks of alcohol. Oh, oh. It's not my fault. I swear it. Oh, oh my head. Oh, this gang of young toughs, they forced it on me, and then on top of it, they stole my parcel. What's that? You say you were forced to drink. Explain this and spare no details. Yesterday afternoon, I was given a parcel to deliver to an address not far from here. I was near the warehouse district when a, a gang of young lads attacked me. Before I could think, they drew knives and gave me a bottle, telling me if I valued my life, I better drink it all. Well, let me tell you, I drank without stopping. I became giddy, and then I must have passed out. I remember nothing else except waking up a moment ago, finding myself alone, my parcel gone. But what could they have wanted, Holmes? It's obvious, Watson. They were seeking some poor soul on whom to test their vile concoction. Tell me, could this bottle be the one they gave you? I can't say. It could be. 
awful. I'll just look at it. Hmm, it has a unique flavor. Rather tasty, I might add. There's no mistaking my senses. This contains turnips. In fact, a liberal amount. But where are you off to, Holmes? Watson, it is time to seek out the distillers of this unique brew. If they are located in this district, they may have much to tell us. That part of the warehouse seems an ideal place to hide, but it would be difficult for anyone to get there. So? I assume this is your special recipe? That depends on who's asking. If it's the law, then I have nothing to do with this. If you're a customer, two shillings gets you a taste. A fair price indeed. Unfortunately, this vintage is a bit full-bodied for my taste but I would be very happy to recover a parcel that went missing near this very spot. What? One other thing. Have you seen this before? Yes, I saw it. One of the dock workers, an odd sort, gave it to a gang member, Brannock. He wanted Brannock to join their gang, or I don't know what. Must have been nigh on two weeks ago. Two days later, he went missing, and not a word since. This man who gave your friend the pendant, can you describe him? Oh, not very tall, strong, wearing a red cap, and he with a hair lip. You could likely find him near Warehouse 12. He told Brannock he worked there. Thank you. By the way, my friend the postman feels badly used. You should change the recipe. Oh, I was sure of that. Turnips weren't near rotted enough. Maybe they need a longer soaking in the gutter water. Now, off with a pair of you. Good news, sir. Here is what you were waiting for. Oh, thank you, sir. I could kiss you. Here now. You can't just leave this laying about like that. Lord love you, the scrapers are uh, what it is. Well, come now, let's celebrate with a, a drink. This should prove useful. Hello to you again, sir. I won't waste time. We have discovered new details that may lead us to this elusive seaman. Most significantly, the man has a missing eye and wears a silver ball in its place. By God, that can be no other than Dirty Summers, a nasty brute, that one. Where could one find him? He must have signed on with a ship, because he was here last night looking to hire some men. How did he behave while he was here? He gave me extra to secure the private table behind that curtain. During his time here, men of all sorts came and went seeking positions. However, he seemed nervous and fearful as his knife was unsheathed and ready the whole of the night. May I examine this table behind the curtain? Certainly, if it will help. These cuts 
seem quite recent. There are four symbols. What a pity. The window is closed and the front door is barred. We must gain entry. But how? But why in blazes are we breaking in? Our homes! Bravo, Holmes! Ah, it bites! A splendid catch, Watson, but I prefer to let it go. After you. This should prove useful. Sales. And according to this tab, the case is measured two meter by one meter by one meter. Someone has entered these cases of sailcloth to hold something very different, but still suited to their particular form. Oh my God, Holmes, you do not mean that all these crates are better called coffins. Look, Watson, a page torn from an American passport. One Amos Colby, 36 years old, from Boston, Massachusetts. He arrived here just three weeks ago. What business did he have here? This drawing on the back of this page, it resembles some vision of a demon and... Good God, Holmes! It was drawn with blood! The end of this hat pin is covered with blood. It would seem likely that whoever cut themselves with this pin is... Here now, this is hardly reassuring. Blood! We can't do this in such a way. How could we lift up this weight? Let us pause to consider the facts, Watson. No mystery can resist an agile mind.
Bravo, Holmes! Watson, we must inspect this place carefully and leave no stone unturned. We have little time. Good God! Holmes, where are we? Tread lightly, Watson. This place seems alive and watchful. I need something. This should prove useful. A box full of pendants in the shape of a pelican. These are brothers to the one found at the Nepali's house. Quite useless. These trinkets are nothing but charming decoys. smell. This water contains a strong opiate. Metal boxes, and here is one that still bears a label. It is in the shape of a flower, which appears to be Edelweiss, and it is black. How remarkable. They are not common. I must take the contents of this box to Baker Street for a more thorough analysis. Opiate, beyond all doubt. You are right. This is definitely an opiate. Holmes, could these villains be opium smugglers? What a peculiar drawing. The left sleeve of this costume bears slight traces of blood, and here, the pocket is pierced. Aha! There appear to be papers inside. What a horror! This man was bound with rope shortly before his death. This man's right index finger is coated with dust. This man has a small wound on his left thumb. He must have drawn that strange figure in blood on the torn passport page. This message is engraved in some language unknown to me. 
I must make a copy of this message before the police arrive. A herd of buffalo could not leave a greater mess than the local constabulary. Excellent. A perfect copy of those symbols. Bravo, Holmes! This man fought hard before his tragic end. The dreadful-looking broken statuette reveals much about his terrible struggle. This unfortunate man must have interrupted the kidnappers while they were transferring their victims. What are you speaking about? All of the kidnapped people were kept here and from the look of things for some days. There must have been a good number of them, so they were drugged to keep them docile. Then, with the vile assistance of riffraff hired by Dirty Summers, they loaded these people into the missing cases from the warehouse. Last night, these poor unfortunates were loaded onto a waiting ship, their destination as yet unknown. Oh my god! Holmes! Look! Let's leave this place, Watson. We can do nothing here. See that this is delivered to Mr. Holmes at the Diogenes Club as quickly as possible. Do not leave without his reply, though such insistence will undoubtedly cause Mycroft some distress. What the devil are you doing, Holmes? I am sending a letter to my dear brother and including a reference to the strange markings I found on the temple stones. Perhaps he can make something of them. Watson, I must know what was in the metal boxes that we found in this strange temple. And there, it is done. This is a very fine powder. Perhaps if I apply heat? That smell. Undoubtedly a derivative of opium and morphine. This is the same compound on the ball found at Stenick's place. How goes it, Holmes? What is the result of your analysis? Without question, this is clearly a derivative of opiate. Something still troubles me, though. The facts indicate this substance must have been used in large quantities. But no English druggist could provide such an amount. Far too risky. And I do not believe British customs would allow such a large quantity to pass through unremarked. Well, I am convinced of quite the opposite, Holmes. How can that be, Watson? Explain your reasoning. Please remember that, as a doctor, I am accustomed to the use of various compounds, including powerful derivatives such as distilled opiates. Those imported from the continent enjoy a special status with British customs, who do not bother the shipments and take little note of the quantities inside. Such shipments are easily identified by their labels. They always bear the identifying mark of the particular medical academy within that country which has an agreement with our own governing academy. Though I can't determine the precise country of origin, I would swear the label scrap left on this crate is one such as this. 
Doctor, I will never get to the end of your possibilities. You have solved this little riddle for us. Quickly, and waste no time, we must get ourselves to the Custom Inspector's office at the harbour. What? Now? Can't it wait for our tea? Oh, coming, Holmes. Sir, did you find what you were looking for? Yes, and no. Tell me, where can I find the customs agent? The man's name is Beddoes, and at this time of day, you'll likely find him on the pier near a ship. Thank you. You have been most helpful. Pleasure to be of service, sir. Let us hope that these registers contain what we need. They must be here, somewhere. Aha, these must be the registers. This one concerns special imports. Hmm, nothing definite or comprehensible here. All that they mention is that these goods were stored in Warehouse 16. I see nothing further of interest here. Best to leave these ledgers as we found them. boxes were stored here. A careful search of the place might reveal some valuable evidence. I see no way of opening this door. Filthy tar! My shoes are thick with it! Hold on, Watson. These traces have much to tell us. Regard how they resemble those nearby. The size is undoubtedly seven. The shoes are also hard-soled. The right shoe is missing a nail. Ah, Watson, our case would have been better served if I had applied the intelligence God granted me. If you ever have a mind to chronicle this adventure, I fear your readers will be much disappointed. I should have examined that area of the warehouses with more care, because this footstep is similar to those found at Stenix. We have only to follow to learn where they lead. Here is a tab. This one is less damaged. Excellent. We now know the source of these illicit goods. Watson, we shall now return to Baker Street. There is much to be done. Have we received any word from Mycroft? It seems to me there is a letter on the table for you. Perhaps it is from Mycroft. So, the poor devil who lay under this warehouse was indeed the owner of the passport embellished with the drawing made in blood. His thumb was gashed. He is most assuredly the one who made the drawing during his captivity. But what brought him to this place? 
Furthermore, if this detective agency has any standing, it rests on the reputation of its associates. They are rightly regarded as proven professionals. Therefore, this dying man's last efforts were to leave clues for those who might come after him. Remember, Watson, this man's forefinger was also coated with dust, and we found drawing drawn in that very same dust upon the floor. Exactly, Holmes. An addition symbol was there, placed within a rectangle. Let us consider the facts, Watson. A number of people were taken by force underneath Warehouse 12, drugged, and then transferred in boxes by ship to some as of yet unknown destination. For the moment, London has nothing more to tell us. These people, whoever they are, have a small advantage. We should give them no more. We must make our departure. But to what destination? Wait, Watson! I have a sudden thought. What do an Edelweiss and a rectangle containing an addition symbol signify to you? Switzerland, of course. Watson, we shall divide our tasks. I shall report the particulars of Mr. Colby's death, as this affair requires the utmost in tact and discretion. Well, I never. Thank you, I am sure. Watson, you know I'm impersonal, each man to his specialty. I rely on you to book passage for two to the continent immediately. And, Watson, see what you can learn of an institute called the Black Edelweiss and determine if it is located in Switzerland. If this place can be found, I believe it holds the answers that we seek. Now, hurry, man. The game is on. Hold on, Holmes, you are reading some penny dreadful. Here I thought to find you deep in some ancient news clippings, seeking similarities with our case, and yet you waste your time reading some outlandish adventure based upon some improbable hero. Beware of considering popular literature as unworthy of our interest, Watson. Besides, am I not myself considered by some of your readers as an improbable hero living out outlandish adventures? Holmes, you go too far. Let's not speak on this, Watson. This horrible statuette gives my nerves a shake, Holmes. This trip to Switzerland, it brings back unpleasant associations, doesn't it? Watson, those events should remain where they belong, in the past. However, I will not be joining you in Switzerland. When the train arrives in Lyon, I am afraid we must part company, as I have business elsewhere that will take some time. But Holmes... As a doctor, your impeccable credentials will allow you to ably advance our investigation at the Black Edelweiss Institute. My presence would likely only arouse suspicion and harm our cause. I am writing the name of a Swiss policeman on this piece of paper. He is stationed at the village near the Institute and is a most reliable and capable man. Turn to him should you entertain even the slightest suspicions during your visit. And you, Holmes? As for me, Watson, I will investigate this case from the other side. Keep your wits about you, Watson. Should you witness anything out of the ordinary, no matter how trifling it seems, go immediately to the valley and ask for Superintendent Bilger. I know him. He's a trustworthy fellow and has been informed of your presence in his district. He should prove to be an able ally.
here now. This is hardly reassuring. Coachman, wait for me here. <laughs> 